Today, we're stepping aboard a yacht that's as tough as it is striking. A 15.29 meter aluminium motor yacht built in the Netherlands in 2010. This CE Category A vessel, crafted from aluminium, has all the hallmarks of an offshore powerhouse, ready for year-round use. With a draft of 1.15 meters, a beam of 4.66 meters and a displacement of 13.6 tons, she's built for stability and comfort on the open water. If, like me, you're drawn to the rugged appeal of offshore coastal explorers, then I think you'll love this boat. Her design prioritizes both excellent sea keeping and onboard comfort, from the sturdy build that inspires confidence offshore to the inviting accommodations that make you feel right at ease. I'm really looking forward to showing you around this boat. It's very unique, it's got lots of features that I personally really like. So yeah, let me show you around. But before I do, don't forget to give the video a like. And if you'd like to help support my work, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Welcome back to the channel. I'm about to take you on board this boat, which is the fourth boat that I've filmed now uh, in the last couple of days. I'm currently at Lustrex's indoor boathouse. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to showing you around this vessel. There's another boat going out for a mini sea trial. The guys from Devalk. Have a good trip. Thank you. <laughs> right, anyway, back with the uh, boat tour. Now this is a really lovely looking boat. I love the lines on this, I love the features. And if you love explorer style boats, I'm fairly confident uh, you're really gonna enjoy this boat. Now, she is currently listed for sale. I'll give you more details about that at the end of the video. But for now, let me take you on board and show you around. By the way, if you haven't already, please don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter, link in the description. Cool, starting off with the stern, we've got a swim platform there. So if you wanna get in and out of the water relatively easily, then obviously it's perfect for that. Also, amidships, uh, we've got the passerelle there as well, which is obviously currently retracted at the moment but let's jump on board via the starboard side and I'll enter the cockpit via the starboard access over here right straight away you can see sizable cockpit I love the fact that you can extend uh, the cover over the top there so if you want to get some shade uh, hide from the sun like I tend to do then you can do that as you can see l-shaped seating area over here on the port side with some additional seating over here on the starboard side. So if I come and sit down over here, just to give you a bit of a, a vantage point to let you know what the view is like. There we go, look, you can just imagine your friends sat over there or family sat over there enjoying a drink. Obviously I'm here on my own, so it's just me at the moment. But yeah, you can imagine having some people on here at anchor somewhere, enjoying the view, enjoying a drink and something to eat. Now under here, these two hatches, of course, we've got the engines. I'll show you that area towards the end of the tour. Uh, I must admit, when I first saw these hatch coverings, I thought, well, there's no way I'm gonna be able to show you the engines because uh, they're bolted down. Now the hatches are bolted down, but obviously they're not because you can just lift it up, look. But yeah, I thought that these meant you had to undo them before you got access to the engines, but yeah, silly me. Anyway, over here on the port side, another place where you can come and sit down and relax. Obviously you've got the bollards over there as well and a capstan over there as well. So if you want to operate this boat single-handedly, um, they made it really easy for you to do that. Some more safety gear over here, look. And if you are thinking about upgrading any of the safety gear on your boat, make sure you head out my Amazon store. There's loads of stuff on there, you'll find the link in my bio. Right, let's head towards the bow along the starboard side deck. Uh, one of the first things I notice is plenty obviously to grab onto here. We've got the rail here and a little boardwalk and look, we've even got little scuppers down there as well. So you can tell straight away that this boat has been designed for some serious kind of offshore cruising. Uh, plenty to grab onto if you do happen to find yourself out here on the upper deck whilst you're underway in some of the choppy stuff another access gate over there as well. So you can quickly jump onto the pontoon or onto the jetty. 
some more bollards there. And as you can see over here on the starboard side, got some vertical portholes. And I'll take you inside in just a second. Another thing that I really like about this boat is that you've also got some sun pads on this raised area here. So if you do happen to find yourself cruising in some warmer climates during the summer, you can come out and enjoy the sun by laying on those, those sun pads as well. A vent over here for the accommodation areas down below and another one over there on the port side. Another feature that I really like about this boat in terms of the design and her overall look are these forward raking windows. Um, I think for me, you can really tell the heritage and genre of an explorer uh, by little subtle touches such as those. The fact that on here you've got the forward raking windows and that overhang as well. Look at the size of that overhang. You're definitely not going to get any issues when it comes to sun glare whilst you're underway with those forward raking windows and the overhang as well. Over there on the starboard side, coach roof, a big old searchlight. I'm pretty sure there's one over on the port side as well, but we'll go and have a look in a second. When it comes to her ground tackle, there is a single anchor and nestled in the chain locker is 100 meters of chain. The stainless steel windlass is electric. I also really like the flare of this bow. I mean, this has got quite a good top speed and you can imagine punching through those waves that flared bow really coming into use there, pushing the excess water back into the sea rather than it coming over the deck. Remember, she is a CE Category A vessel, meaning she can handle winds in excess of 40 knots. As you can see here, got a skylight. Again, that leads down into the accommodation, which I'm going to show you around in a minute with some additional vents there. But if I just stand back here, oh yeah, look, there is another spotlight over there on the port side of the coach roof. But what a profile, look at that. Absolutely stunning. I say, this is the first time I've seen this boat. I've only been on it for about an hour, but I absolutely love it uh, for all the reasons I've already mentioned, really. But again, as we walk down the port side deck, as you can see, plenty to hold on to. Got a handrail over here on the left, and obviously another handrail over here on the right as well, and a handrail that runs all the way along the superstructure. If we look at the elegant radar mast, which can be lowered, we can see the Simrad radar. Atop the mast is a radar reflector and note also the life raft stowed away up here. We can also see the air horn and searchlight. But the other thing I like, look, my subscribers probably already know that I love the commercial looking boats. Uh, and this definitely has that kind of feel to it, especially the way these windows are configured as well. If you saw just this part of the boat, uh, you'd probably think it's a pilot boat. And again, that's something I absolutely love because those kind of boats are really becoming very popular now. And you can see why, you know, you can spend some serious time on this boat doing some serious cruising. Um, and I think that when it comes to a boat that you want to use often, you want a boat that you know can handle rough weather. And that's exactly what this boat can do. As you can see, we've got overhang here, indirect LED lighting in the overhang. So at night, I can imagine this is beautiful when it's all lit up. Speakers there as well for the sound system. And as you can see, we've got a sliding door there. Right, let's head in to the living area. Over here on the port side is where we find a U-shaped seating area and my Mavic drone, as well as my GoPro. But yeah, lots of headroom in here. And again, just going back to the sea keeping ability of this boat, it's not often you'll come on a boat and you'll find a handrail on the overhead like that. But again, it's for when you're moving around this boat, when you're underway, fast cruising in choppy seas, there's always something for you to hold on to. Even over here, look on the starboard side, you've got the fiddles on there that you can grab onto as well. CD player in there, bit of cabinetry, digital controls for the climate control. Again, look, big old windows all the way around this area. And that is one of my favorite positions to be, apart from obviously the helm. But when we were out in the sea trial, that's where I was sat flying the drone. Uh, and I'll show you the vantage point from there in a second. But over here on the starboard side, raised seating area. So you can have your friends and family sat on both sides of the boat, a really sociable area. This whole boat really seems to me to be configured for that kind of social experience in, in any weather cruising, really. 
If you look on the overhead, you can see these massive skylights up there as well. They can, of course, be opened. But if you are underway and you want them shut, then these do come all the way across as well. So you can close them off. But you can just imagine cruising on this boat at night in the summer with those open. You can imagine the view as you look up to a starlit sky. Absolutely stunning. Of course, another area I always like when I'm on boats like this is of the helm position. And what a helm position this is. Uh, we've got two Volvo engines, Volvo Penta engines on this boat. Here we've got the Simrad multifunction display. Bit of a sporty looking wheel there, look at that. RPM indicator for the port and starboard engine. Simrad display over there, wiper controls. There's our, there are the uh, controls for the searchlights as well. And that you've got a little tablet there that you can fit Simrad radar. And here on the starboard side of the helm position are all the various switches. You've got the bilge pump control, uh, nav lights, anchor lights, engine room lights. Yeah, everything you need. And we've got some more dials up on the brow as well, look over there. So yeah, when you're sat here, navigating and operating this boat, you've got a really good vantage point. If I just sit on here, very, very comfortable seating as well. Over here to our right, throttle control levers for the Volvo engines, IPS control joystick over there, and look, Simrad VHF as well. But if I just sit back, give you a moment to take in that view, bring that camera down. That's something that uh, people always mention actually about how high I hold the camera. And this is uh, a new camera for me, relatively new. And I'm trying to get used to it, but obviously I've got to hold it a little bit lower so you can get a bit better angle of the uh, boat. But here we go, look, what a view. I might actually do a live stream from within this boathouse. Once I've finished filming this, I've just put a poll uh, on my YouTube channel actually. I'll put a post on there saying, look, do you want me to do uh, a live stream and show you some of the boats? So if you do subscribe to my channel, those are the kind of things that I like to ask you, my subscribers, because if you say yes, I'm definitely gonna do it. And if you say no, I won't. Okay, over here on the port side, there's the galley, L-shaped galley. But let me just step over here and show you the vantage point from, let's call it a navigator's chair. Again, look, you've got a good bird's eye view of what's going on in the galley. So if your chef is starting to burn your food, you can say, oi, turn the, uh, turn the hob down, <laughs> or more spices, less spices. But anyway, you can keep an eye on what's going on in the galley if you want to from this point. And of course, if we look over there, it's the starboard side, we see the helm position. But I love the way that this is all open down there, look. Talking of which, let's head down below. In total, this boat has six berths and they are spread throughout four cabins. Before we take a look in the cabins, let me first show you around the galley. So as I said, we've got the galley over here on the port side. Let me open some of these up for you to give you an idea. When it comes to the amount of storage that you've got uh, behind the hob, we have a fridge and down here we have a freezer. And I'm guessing that might be an ice maker. So yeah, I'm assuming that obviously you lift these steps up and you can get access to that, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. Just to do it one handed, I'm probably gonna end up making a fool of myself. So we've got a four hob induction cooker there, oven underneath. Some more storage space in here. And our stainless steel double sink as well. And look, there are those vertical portholes I was talking about. Two over here on the port side and on the starboard side must lead into the accommodation. Let me take you into the first cabin, which is a guest cabin, double cabin in here. I love the way this is lit. The fact you've got, what, five spotlights up there creates a really nice ambience down here. As you can see, double bed. You've got sockets over there, power points over there as well. Bit of storage right next to your bed and you can walk all the way around this as well. So I think this would be a really nice cabin for guests, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. 
Do have a little porthole here as well, which you can open up for some ventilation. And look, check out the amount of storage here. I'm pretty confident you know what it looks like behind these doors. Well, you can guess, but I'll open up that one for you. And let's have a look at this one here. Oh, interesting, an access panel there for the Victron Transformer. I didn't notice that when I was looking around before, but there we go. So yeah, look, here's another view of this area. I'd be quite happy staying down here. I think this is a nice uh, guest cabin. Obviously you've got a headroom over here that tapers down in line with the design of the boat, obviously, in terms of the layout and configuration. But still enough headroom um, at the head there so you don't feel claustrophobic. But no, I like this cabin, decent sized cabin, really well lit. You've still got a bit of natural light coming in here thanks to that porthole we saw earlier. Another spotlight up there as well. Right, let me stand up, continue heading forward now. Being conscious of the fact that I don't want you just to see the roof as I walk around. Let me just center that camera, there we go. Okay, let's head over to the starboard side now. Open up this door and we have a day head. Sink there, look, toilet there. There are the two portholes that we saw when we were on the upper deck. And we've got another door here. Open up this. Oh, there you go. Some more storage over there, look. You've got access panels as well. It says compressor under that one. Getting some more storage there. Right, let's shut this door. Spin around. Give you standard salute in the mirror, as you were. Okay, over here on the starboard side, this is a sliding door. We open up this to reveal this area here. So look, obviously at the moment it's not really being used as a sleeping area. Chuck a mattress in there. You've got your power points over there, look. Another porthole over there. I'm gonna shut that off. And move forward into the owner's cabin. But I've just noticed actually, look, we've got another skylight up there. There we go. Right, let's have a look in here. Decent sized bed amidships. Some storage underneath. Fire extinguisher over there on the port side. You can keep your stuff on there. There's another little shelf over there on the port side as well. Porthole, mirror on the bulkhead. Gives you that extra sense of depth in here. Another porthole over there on the starboard side. And look, there's that skylight that we saw a minute ago. With one of the vents over there and another one over there. All right, let's move over to the left, spin around 180 degrees, and here we have an ensuite. Decent sized shower here, toilet down there, and over there on the right, a sink, another porthole. Heated towel over there on that bulkhead, and look, another ventilation kind of skylight up there as well. Big old decent sized mirror there. I'll look through that porthole. But yeah, nice cozy area. Again, you know, if I was gonna be staying on this boat for a couple of weeks, I think I'd be very, very cozy. The really good layout, lots of space. You do not feel cramped on here at all. So, right, we've done that cabin over there. We've done the owners. We've done this space, obviously. And we've done behind there. So, let's turn around and head back up into the saloon. Let's delve into the engine bay and explore the power and systems behind this impressive vessel. Propulsion is provided by twin Volvo Penta IPS 435 horsepower engines, capable of delivering a top speed of 30 knots. The addition of trim tabs ensures optimal performance at various speeds. For extended cruising, she comfortably maintains a 20 knot cruising speed and consumes around 75 litres per engine per hour.
An 11KW Onan generator with auto start-stop functionality ensures a continuous supply of power for onboard systems and amenities. The electrical system is supported by two robust 360 AH batteries. And for extended voyages, a water maker is on board to provide a constant supply of fresh water thanks to the 1,150 litre freshwater tanks. And here's a look at those dog clips I was talking about earlier on in the video. Something I noticed as well, which I might have probably missed off at the beginning of the uh, boat tour video. Well, look, we've got a control there as well for the engine. So if you are aft controlling the boat stern two, you've got a little docking station there as well. Very nice touch. So what about her range? Well, she has a 2,200 litre main tank and a day tank that holds 700 litres, giving a total fuel capacity of 2,900 litres, which is around 638 gallons. When motoring at her cruising speed of 20 knots, she burns around 75 litres per engine per hour, which means her range whilst motoring at her cruising speed will be around 400 nautical miles at 20 knots. Obviously, reduce that speed and the range will go up dramatically. So thanks for joining me on this yacht tour aboard this very unique boat. As I say, I absolutely love this vessel for a number of different reasons. I think she's got a really nice look. Those twin engines, IPS control. I like the cabin layout and I absolutely love that helm position. But what do you like about this boat? Let me know in the comments. If you are interested in finding out more, then this vessel is currently listed for sale with my friends at the Vork Yacht Brokers. If you want to find out more about the boat, then I'll leave a link in the video description. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Vulcan and also to the owner of this boat for letting me come on board and show you, my subscribers, around. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, feel free to get in contact with me. If you're looking for a boat to charter, please also do get in contact with me. It doesn't matter the size of the boat, where in the world you want to charter the vessel or what your budget is, uh, let me know. It's something new that I've started offering to you, my subscribers and viewers, so please do get in contact with me. And don't forget as well, I do have a free newsletter that you can sign up for. Uh, you'll find the link again in the video description. And really the newsletter is just about sharing uh, stuff with you in relation to the Explorer, Trawler, uh, and Expedition Yacht Market. So both that are for sale, both that are for charter, uh, new launches. So if you're interested in these kind of boats, whether they're the smaller vessels or the bigger ones, super yacht size, then please do sign up for that free newsletter. Don't forget to come and follow me on Instagram as well because I like to keep you all updated in terms of what I'm doing on there. Uh, you'll find the link for that in the description or just search for yacht underscore boy and you'll find me on Instagram as well. So again, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm looking forward to sharing some other boats with you that I've been filming here uh, over the last couple of days. But yeah, let me know what you think. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you are a fan of coastal explorers like this one, be sure to check out my dedicated playlist. I'll leave a link in the description below. And a big shout out to my newest channel members. Your support means the world. If you're curious about channel memberships and the perks they offer, there's a link for that in the description too.